Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to another Soul Lucian Sunday because being the soul that you are is the solution. We are here with my friend Ann Metcalf today. Ann is an author, teacher, retired registered nurse, gut health advocate, energy jewelry crafter. We'll, ask, we'll have to ask her about that. Then she lives in Delta, BC, Canada. Her passion for health and mentoring kids in the garden is her way of restoring our ancient wisdom and connection with our food, the soil, and the earth. In this way, Anne believes that healthy food from healthy soil allows the soul of the soil to be that bridge and create harmony in our physical body and spirit. We are stepping into times where our conscious eating and conscious living will create more aligned solutions for ourselves, humanity, and the earth. And welcome. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yes, everything yeah. that you wrote in your bio is really everything that Solution Sunday is about. It's about coming back into harmony with our souls and the soul of the earth, the soul of the universe, so that we can start living back in that oneness again, healthy, happy, thriving. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm really excited. You know, I've known you for a little while now, and I know that you work with children. And right now you're working with a second grade class. And you're really doing a lot of things to help them connect the dots to living naturally. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it, it's kind of a work in progress. I'm just there temporarily as their uh, true teacher sort of um, kind of merges into full-time work. And so I'm there um, basically for October every day. And then I'm by myself three days a week. And then she comes in uh, in the morning on Tuesday, Thursday. And so connecting them with part of it is them feeling that um, connection with each other. And we talk about respect and we're practicing mindfulness. And we do that mindfulness breathing every 15 minutes. The My phone alarm goes off and we stop and we just take three deep breaths and we breathe out. And then we carry on with whatever we were doing. And uh, the other thing that I've been doing is in that connecting them with nature, because it's so important. You know, when kids are kids, you know, they're kicking up the leaves. And then, I, was, I don't know, something happens. And then I think they get stuck into the whole paradigm of where we're living right now. And that's, you know, sort of in the fear. I see more masks coming into the schools. And I'm going... No, we need to find that joy within us. And so we've been looking at maple seeds and um, that's sort of part of the science. And they, they're looking at chemical and physical changes. Well, I'm going, well, we've got physical changes going on all around us, you know, with the leaves. And so there's that connection that I'm trying to, this is the seed, that seed of life. And uh, I'm having them actually bring in, uh, I call it Fresh Food Friday, because in during COVID, I was learning about the gut health and how we've got more bacteria in our bodies than we do cells. And just to bring that um, connection in with the food and how when we're healthier, everything, as you were saying, everything is, is balanced, it's in harmony. And for me, for these kids, that's kind of a first step. You know, making connections so Fridays, eventually it will be no packaged food on Friday. Uh, that's 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 my goal. Uh, no packaged food. And when you see kids bringing in goldfish and Fruit Loops for a recess snack, I'm going, I mean, their whole that affects the whole uh, biology. It affects their brain. Um, and so they're not thinking straight. And I'm going, well, no wonder some of them have listening or attention problems uh, because that their body is trying to deal with the chemicals in the food. And that's why this whole fresh food is so important. Yeah. And um, and I've got started a gardening club 
at the same school. Uh-huh. So we're, we're sort of planting, we're digging out the bulbs that were in these four garden beds and we're gonna put them in a what we call a terrace garden up above. And yeah, so I get these little, they're actually grade, probably grade five, six students. They come out when you, we every Tuesday and it's gonna be rain or shine until I actually stop my teaching um, um, at the school. And then I'll go, by that time, it'll be uh, November, and then I'll come back on my own. I just volunteer in the spring, where we'll be planting seeds and vegetables and so, and creating that um, connection with the soil and that the food comes from the soil. It's not just something that mom and dad plop on their plate. Like, where does it come from? And the next science experiment is a seed, a maple seed with water, without and uh, with water, but without light, and a, a seed in the soil. And this, so it gets the light and then covering one up, so there's no light. So what are all these components that create the life of everything around us? You know, trees, fruit, um, all of that. So I'm just kind of create that, uh, I don't know, the, it's a sense of curiosity and wonder. And I see it in some of the students and others, it's just like this blank slate. Kids are supposed to be curious right? and wonder about everything. My eight-year-old granddaughter is really curious, you know, and she she questions a lot of kind of what we're doing. And, uh, but it just picks up. She's so bright and alert. And some of these students that I teach, I'm going, like, I want to just shake them up, you know, look, look at all of life around you. But anyway, so it's a, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Wow. What an, what an incredibly lucky classroom that is to have you there to help them to connect to the mindfulness. It's really sad when we see you know, children six, seven, eight years old who have already been so traumatized by the society that we live in that, you know, they're kind of scared to be curious or, you know, they're just kind of staying in their own lane and Mm -hmm. trying to protect themselves the best they can. Yeah. And that it's really hard to get them that sole solution when they are already when because I know the they say that once you hit seven that's kind of where you've absorbed everything I mean I knew new things happen but if they've absorbed a lot of what they're going to be I'm going oh dear (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, it's so sad to see what's happening to to these children you know there are so many traumas that are imposed that people aren't realizing are actually traumas to to these children. All the all the shots they get, all the in utero um, ultrasound, you know, all of these things are really traumatic to a mm-hmm. tiny newborn or not yet born. And yeah, yeah. All of these things are traumas but they're not recognized as traumas. So we keep doing more and more trauma to these children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're working at, uh, on a classroom. Uh, I mean, the big thing for me is respect. And they they talk about it. They come into the classroom and say, what makes a kind, loving, um, respectful, peaceful classroom? So they can say the words right now, but a lot of them it's, Okay, we need to practice on the action part of it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm playing with that, and actually, I found a po- one of my poems that I wrote back in 2017. It's in my poetry book, and it's called uh, Wildfires. And I was in a grade three four class where these kids were totally. It was like Mexican uh, jumping beans firing off the wall constantly, and they. Uh, I could have been a man from Mars and they wouldn't have cared less. And they were just all doing their own thing, totally oblivious to like anybody else or even me. Because I mean, we do teach them respect of, of uh, adults when you're in a classroom and uh, it was just non-existent. So I came home and I wrote this poem and I'm actually going to read it to my grade twos. Um, yeah. 
because it talks about um, sort of everything sort of firing and then comparing that to a pizza. They're all components of a pizza. You might be the cheese sauce. You might be the, the crust. And when you put it all together, it's this delicious meal that everyone has created with their own sort of essences. But when you dump on too much tomato sauce, or whatever it is, then the other flavors um, aren't, you can't taste them, they're not recognized. And so it's that, because I see that in the classroom a lot, and they just want, and I think part of this, because they haven't been heard, Lisa. Yes. They, they, they're not heard, because um, some of them, you know, they, they talk to me, I get hugs, um, from certain kids and they they come up and say, Mrs. M, I need a hug. I go, okay, you know, and I give it to them because we've been told as teachers, hands off. Mm -hmm. And I know the kindergarten teachers don't do that. Grade one teachers, if the kid needs a hug, they give it to them uh, because that's what they need at the moment. And some of them are just, you know, stories popping up all over the place and they want to share with somebody. And so I think some of it, parents are so busy in their own realm and these kids, they don't have that. It's like, where's the parenting gone? Where's that, the role model? Where's the listening skills? And where's the honoring the feelings? Um, yeah, so I guess it's quite a, a mixture of things that I'm sort of working through. And you know, part of that, it's also a reflection um, for me because I get to practice my infinite patience. <laughs> and and that's not always easy. And so I'm going, right, infinite patience, infinite love, infinite tolerance, infinite forgiveness. It's what the knowledge book teaches. I, I read it every day. And we need to be practicing that. Uh, and so, yeah, so this is a great experience. I've been working my tail off, as you well know. <laughs> um, anyway. So, yeah, that's that's kind of one of the things that um, I do. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. I just I'm so happy that to know that at least some children are getting some of this information to be able to start to see how to treat each other with dignity and honor and respect and kindness. Because you know, there's definitely that's not what is modeled in our society you know the exact opposite is revered you know with uh, mm -hmm. all of these the shoot 'em up movies and you know all, god forbid all the stuff on the news just like none of that is about kindness or caring or respect so we really do need to to start with these children they come in with it naturally but yeah. You know, as as adults, we're just taught that children are a completely blank slate, that they have absolutely no intelligence of their own, that they need to be taught everything, the ways of the world, and it's completely backwards. It's not true. They're they're born with divine wisdom. These are absolutely. grand beings of light in human in in little tiny bodies. It's the only yeah. way you can get birthed onto this planet, people. <laughs> like, you gotta come in, you gotta have start with a little body. But just because the yeah. body is little does not mean that the soul is little. That it's, no, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so expansive, and it's and the age thing. Um, you know, we we presume uh, as you know us, uh, the elders, know it all. But you know, some of those. Oh, they're old souls that exactly. are coming in and they have incredible wisdom and sometimes it just you know one student uh, who's a real troublemaker in this grade five class I was helping with and he says I forget how somehow we're talking about the universe and he says we're actually in a museum and the aliens are looking upon us as we are in this museum and I thought, wow, you know, for a 12-year-old, 10-year-old, um, that was pretty profound that that was how he was seeing us. And then I said later, I said, yes, but, you know, in a museum, things are 
still, is your museum moving? And he said, and I said, it can, uh, we can change where we are, who we are in that museum. Mm -hmm. Kind of trying to get, because his behavior choices are not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not good. They don't serve the class and they don't serve himself. So I see these kinds of things. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I wrote Was This Joy, my first book, because it was great a grade one, two class, it just seemed so dysfunctional, so chaotic. So I wrote, came home and wrote the skeleton for that book. And then uh, the other book I wrote just recently was Rosie's Joy, The Magical Wonders Hidden in the Garden, to help them connect with the plants, with the flowers, with the vegetables, getting their hands in the soil and actually feeling um, the the essence of the soil, getting their hands dirty. I mean, I just learned recently you get vitamin B12 by getting all those hands in the soil, getting it under your fingernails and getting some of the minerals from the soil directly into our body. Um, and so just and uh, kind of sparking their curiosity. You know, how do bees work? How do they work with the, the, the garden? What do the worms do? And get them curious instead of, yeah, it's a worm. Oh, wow. That's a magical being that is creating everything we, we need. Um, and anyway, so I wrote that book, um, trying to give that out to uh, uh, schools who have schoolyard gardens to encourage them and to encourage parents. Get back into the garden. Yeah. Get back. In. Even if you live in an apartment, you can have a little container. More and more, I know. I don't know about where you are, but in Vancouver, we've got many community gardens. And for $40 a year, you can have a plot of land and grow lots of vegetables. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. We have a small community garden here where I live. But uh, I do live out in the middle of nature. So a lot of people have their own gardens at their own house, which is yeah. super nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it is. It's so incredibly important to get connected to the earth again. You know, as humanity, you know, we've been subjected to divide and conquer for so long. You know, not only being divided between, you know, countries and and ideologies, but also divided from nature herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people that think that food comes out of a box, like that's not what's happening here, people. <laughs> it's not food. No, no. <laughs> no. and you know, there's, there's that, and you know, we are that authentic sacred design. I mean, all of creation is that sacred, you know, authentic design, and that's, and that's how I see the, the food, and then the soil. I mean, my next book is. The, the, it's going to be the soul, the, the soul of soil. Yay! Because it's, it's alive. Yes. You know, it's, it's got a consciousness. Yep. And Earth herself. Uh, and so when we were talking about respect, it's each other and the Earth. And how do we do that um, in a significant way? Not in a... Because, I mean, they, they have recycling at the schools and the district I work in. Um, but it's always contaminated. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it just all ends up in the garbage mm -hmm. rather than where it's supposed to go. I'm very strict. If there's a banana peel in the garbage, it's show and tell time. If there's paper towels in the uh, garbage or the recycling bin, it's show and tell time. And I have my tongs. And there's uh, there's actually the compost uh, uh, organizer. Uh, it's another, but she's every every child has a job in the classroom and one of them is to take the organic bin and take it into the there's a bigger one in the hallway and they just empty it come back and so it's teaching them so that when they get to be older they go oh yeah that's right i'm helping the earth that way you know returning the organics back to the soil um because that's we need to be replenishing it. We keep take, take, taking. And then we add the, mm -hmm. the chemicals, yeah. which we are ingesting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think that I was thinking about the brain fog today. So all these toxic metals uh, from pollution of the soil or the food, well, that is interfering with uh, our connection, I think, with our, our soul spirit. Absolutely. It, it's, 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 it's like a chemical a layer um, that we can't seem to get beyond. But when we can cleanse or eat healthy, you know, we, we feel better. And I think we function better. And we can feel more connected. It's that whole connection piece where we are, when we're taking the radish or whatever it is from the soil, and we're eating it, and you've, and it, that it brings back the whole thing of mindfulness. Are you, when you're eating your food, in my class, they don't talk when they're having recess, uh, a snack, or lunchtime. Oh, wow. And we play harp music. It was a beautiful harp playing in the, on the computer. And I invite them to just be grateful. Gratitude for the earth, the food, the parents that made their lunch. And so they're just eating in silence. And then they go out and play and are wild and screaming, and that's fine. <laughs> but there, we need to come to that place, I think, of being the, the quiet center. Because as they get older, maybe that maybe they'll remember that quietness they felt and you know listen to other people that um they resonate with you know people who come into so solution sunday they're already resonating with that um what that is and we just need more of that shining light just spreading out uh, around the world exactly I'm, yeah. I'm so happy to hear this about the silence because silence isn't a thing that is, you know, silence doesn't make money. All the noise and confusion makes a lot of money. So, you know, it's being propagated throughout the society. And mm -hmm. it's very, very, I'm, you know, when I ended up facing cancer and not wanting to go the medical route and really needing to tune in knowing that the answer was inside and that I had to tune into that answer. But whenever I sat and tried to tune in, the thoughts in the head were like, da -da 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 -da, all the time, this hamster wheel. And it took me quite a while to be able to quiet my thought space enough to be able to receive the answer you know then you know once the answer dropped in it was obvious to me what the answer was you know <laughs> hey lisa you're not being attacked by some killer disease your body is responding to your consciousness your body is responding to the environment you're providing it's like you have to be able to provide a better quality internal environment in order for your body to be at its best. And, you know, it was really, really difficult to get that mind to quiet. So I'm so happy that you're giving these students at such a young age, the ability to at least have 15 minutes of quiet where they can just tune in. Yeah. Yeah, and that uh, tuning in um, reminds me of Dr. Emoto's work. Yes. Right, and I have his book, and I think I'll take that to my classroom as well, yeah. where they see pictures of mm -hmm. uh, you idiot, <laughs> and then there's a picture of I love you. Yeah. And they can actually see, so when they are talking, saying those words mm -hmm. to somebody else, just like you had that realization that I need to go inside. And what are these answers? Do I need, is it that negativity that's taking a hold of me? And uh, so I guess different examples like them, for for them to see that, oh, you know, because I kind of want that light bulb to, to go on about these unkind words and actions that they're saying and doing to each other. Because, you know, they come in from recess. So-and-so <gasps> pushed me. So-and-so did that. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody's in tears. I've started EFT tapping. Oh, good. And uh, that seems to be helping uh, a few okay. students. 
because they're going, okay, so breathe in. Okay, it's okay to be angry. Okay, now let's release a little bit of it. And so it acknowledges they have the feelings. And then, uh, and I don't, I haven't started the whole thing with the around the face yet. That might be too much for them to go, oh, mom, mommy, Mrs. M was telling us to tap all over our face so we could feel better. <laughs> I go, okay, I've already had one um, issue with the school board. Um, Eight years ago, oh. I got I got called upon the uh, school board for uh, talking about hugging trees and tree music and tree singing. And then I made the mistake of the teachers undergoing cancer treatment. And I said, well, let's just send a little, uh, some love. Let's just send some love. And I said, some people call it a prayer, but it's just, and the principal has to walk in. And I didn't know he was the principal. So I could feel all the heart energy of these, they were grade five kids and I could just feel it. And so it brought tears to my eyes. So there, there's the teacher sitting in front of the classroom, crying, yeah. uh, not sobbing, but you know, tears. Yeah. And you know, he came to me after like, what are you doing? What, what is waking energy? You know, like, and I, well, I compared it. I was, you know, I didn't talk about Reiki to the kids. But that whole energy thing, he didn't get it. He'd never heard of Reiki. He'd never heard of energy healing. And so I got called upon the board. Luckily, the, my representative, union representative understood things about singing trees, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had two meetings where I was just scared out of my mind. Mm -hmm. and I, I had to have somebody... It was the uh, Spanish Inquisition. That's what came. That was the energy that I could feel for myself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Somebody yeah. helped clear that so I could get through it. So now there's a little piece of paper in my file that said unprofessional conduct. I'm going, okay. So, you know, it's, I've been learning. Life is for me. Okay, so I, you know, I, I don't, I do some things and not all things. But if the universe comes up, I'm going, wow, you know what? Um, I sort of twinkle in my eyes and, and use words that get them to think about what else is out there, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, yeah. And I, you know, I, and that's fine because that was meant for me to go through and to introduce energy. And it's interesting mm -hmm. in Canada or in British Columbia, kindergarten grade 12, they have to talk about first nations culture at some point. Well, gee, First Nations people, they talk to the trees, they talk to the animals, and they were connected with the earth. And yeah. guess what? You can do that too now. Yeah. It's interesting. That came up. That came through uh, the following um, September. I'm going divine timing. Right. Right. Divine timing. So they, the more I can talk about that, all I have to say is, oh, the indigenous of Australia, the indigenous of New Zealand, of British Columbia, wherever. And I have full license to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So I, I love that aspect of it, that I can bring the whole earth connection into. And if, and if they don't get it at this moment, that's fine. But they've, for me, it's a seed. Yeah. planting a seed in these these minds that will be our leaders we want them to be more like you and i and all the other whether you call them light workers or people who are awakening uh and know that uh, there's this higher consciousness yeah. in us and everything you know it's part of that wholeness oneness the allness the nothingness all all of that uh, so yeah exactly. yeah so yeah. it's it's been a grand adventure uh, for the last probably 15 years before yeah. that I was, I was asleep we've I all been asleep yeah yeah. yeah the fall of consciousness all of earth fell all humans all beings on this planet fell into that state of density and darkness where we forgot our true nature and here we are. This is this is us returning to our true nature, remembering yeah. who we are, 
as grand beings of light. Yeah, yeah. And that part, I have these hope chests that I make, and they're little beacons that they're scattered all over the world. Every time I travel, I take one. I've sold a few, but they, um, I'll just, they kind of look, they're, this is, they're, they're little, it's called a hope chest. And the hope is humanity's open-hearted, peaceful earth. Oh. Intentions, symbols, uh, crystals, and I just do a little invocation every morning uh, to help just uh, create the that higher consciousness where the earth actually amplifies the energy. So every time, all you have to do is just, you don't even need the hope chest, but it's a, it's a symbol and it's actually an activator so that a minute a day, just be grateful for the earth and everything you receive from her and working with her. And she feels it. She knows every one of us, right? We're these souls embodied in this uh, spirit, soul embodied in these physical forms. And yet there's that uh, metaphysical aspect of us. And so that, that we're, and then the cosmic currents that come daily. Mm-hmm. And it actually, some of that upsets people because they, um, they don't have the capacity or the consciousness to just go with the flow of what it's bringing. And most of the time, I have no idea. But sometimes, it, I don't know, it might be a cloud. The other day, it's this gorgeous pink cloud as I was driving to work. And I just took like two seconds off the road and just absorbed it. Because I'm going, wow, and you could feel the energy from the cloud. And it's just that, ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for just sort of filling my body and soul with that infinite love. Um, so anyway, that's, and then I make the jewelry, which and they, they have these little copper coins on the back. Mm-hmm. And the, the coin, it's got a crop circle and my logo, and it's got a new crop circle. And that actually helps open up the treasure chest within us. It actually works with our DNA. And it, as you know, we are all, we're just this spirit in a body and this divine design. And within us, that every cell is a consciousness. Yes. Right? Every cell. And so these, um, the jewelry just helps activate that knowingness within us. Uh, that's what helped change my path. Uh, of, completely different direction and I'm loving it so now I get to teach in a whole new way I'm not the old teacher I used to be and I'm going thank goodness right (laughs) thank goodness um yeah and so um yeah those are some of the things that I do to assist humanity to awaken because we we and we all do it in different ways don't we do yeah yeah you know, so many, so many people are just in survival mode that they're just trying to keep their head above water. They're not really thinking about what can I do to help? You know, what can I do to help the earth? What can I do to help humanity? And, you know, we're, we're so um, just traumatized and wounded. You know, we're just like, what do I do for the next five minutes to get through the day? And, you know, once we're able to start clearing those things out and reconnecting and start to shift our focus from what's wrong with me, how do I fix this, you know, what do I do, to how can I help, it's a completely different mindset. And when we start to ask, how can I help, then it takes all the the attention off the what's wrong with me and it starts to pull out the things that we actually have buried inside that are the gifts we came to share with humanity yeah yeah that's so beautiful yeah and i let, and how can how can i help uh, i love that i'm going to add that to my little repertoire in my grade 2 classroom right Right. How can I help? And you know, if somebody's upset, you know, ask them, how can can I help you? Yeah. You know, and bringing in that compassion 
um, because some of them I don't have, some of them are perfectionists at the age of eight. And I'm going, oh dear. Um, right. That's they get really upset. They get really upset when they, sometimes it's, it's not being able to do what they want, but sort of um, expectations. And they, it seems that they put it on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, oh, dear, that's so sad. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. perfectionism, yeah. that's a trauma response. Yeah. You know, from trying to trying to manage your your environment. So like, OK, if I if I make sure that this is OK here, maybe I won't get in trouble. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I actually wrote a poem called Procrastinating Perfectionist because I you know I mean, I was I not so much now. Uh, but you put things off until it's perfect. Well, sometimes when you put things off, whatever that was, the opportunity has passed. Yeah. And you just got to jump in, jump in with what you have right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was just, yeah, there's so many things that we can do to uh, help others shine their light um, when they're ready. Because I know, um, not everybody's ready because I think you know, there is an awareness and I think a desire um, that uh, that was I read a book I think it was the nine lives of Jesus and in it was something about the creator wanted to be more than itself mm -hmm. going oh the creator wants to be more than itself and then in the knowledge book it says the creator is actually closer to you than your aorta. I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so it's just some things for me to think about I'm going, oh, okay. So and let's, so kind of working on oneself. I mean, you did, you went inside and that's what we ideally need to do. And sometimes we get outside help. I mean, you've got classes, courses to help people do that and that's fabulous because some of us need those stepping stones mm -hmm. to get there yeah we just need these little shifts of consciousness to you know break the programming that we've yeah. received yeah you know, all of that re you know i call it the reversal matrix programming where we're programmed backwards where we're separated from nature when we're separated from each other when we're traumatizing each other unknowingly <laughs> and you know we don't we don't think anything about it it's like perfectly natural to traumatize each other it's yeah not, yeah <laughs> like it's not natural <laughs> not natural to be living in these states of you know constant just stress and worry and it's not it's not normal but that's what's been set up on this planet and yeah. in order for us to take our planet back, in order for us to bring heaven back to earth, it's up to us. We mm -hmm. have to do it. It's not going to be done for us. No. Yeah. That's why we're here. Exactly. Right. Yes. Uh, and the like the you, me, others, uh, you know, some of your listeners, um, that's why we're here to be those little sparks to just flare up and say, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, instead of being the wildfire in the classroom, being a wildfire to help humanity awaken. Exactly. Here to yeah. ignite the awakening of yeah. humanity yeah. so that we can restore this beautiful, beautiful planet that we live on, which is like a living library. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a, it's like this repository of life in multitudinous forms and you know we've really because we have been taught basically that earth is just this big dead rock you know floating through space and that we can just use any of the resources at our will and you know that there is no consciousness in earth or in animals you know we can just use them as we please oh i know that just separates us from the truth of what actually is. And it, it prevents us from seeing life, like all of this life around us that we just systematically destroy 
because we don't recognize it as life. Yes. As conscious. Yeah. yeah. That and that's you're right. That's what that separation it, it creates that distance. And then that enables people to to do the atrocities to exactly. ourselves, to the planet. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's on the land or the air or the sea. And just because we can. Well, we need to be uh, and all our leaders, I just keep sending them love and light. Let leaders of countries and corporations, businesses, and to work on that whole respect for each other, respect for the earth. And the, and one of these days, Lisa, that stuff will be taught. Yes. And there was an old movie, it was called The Last Mimsy, and it was probably done about 20 years ago. And the beginning scene are these kids, no, it's the end, end scene. Uh, the kids are having their lesson on this lovely mountain with the flowers. And the end of the story, the teacher's going, okay, that's all for now, class. And all the kids start floating up and going off to wherever part of the earth they came from. And they were just floating up wow. and flying out into the air. And they're going, oh, yeah. Because it was a story about them coming, somebody coming back in time because they messed things up and they um yeah these two kids all of a sudden had these abilities um that no one else had and they thought the kids were crazy right but they weren't they were they were embodying uh their their true gift and the scientists wanted to probe them and right. what was going on and they escaped um and so the scientist in the future is going because the, the Mimsy was this rabbit, a pretend rabbit, and it was sent as a computer to see what was going on in the current time because they wanted to see what they could fix in the future. And so we're now in that future, and how can we co create that harmony and peace and love here and now? to take us into that future that is awaiting us. Yes, it is. And it's happening. Uh, it's, I know for myself and probably for you, it's not fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on wake up, people. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, and, that, and that's all. Imagine, I guess, imagine if everybody woke up at the same time. I don't know. I uh, don't know what that would be like. So maybe the divine timing that 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 because we're here to evolve and so that evolvement process we're all here for different um elements or aspects of that evolution and some of us are evolving that's where the you know the rising of the consciousness and others are here not to do that so much or they're just slower and uh, the knowledge book says it will all you will all awaken i'm going okay thank you right. <laughs> thank you exactly. whether it's yeah. in this lifetime or a different one whether it's in this physical body incarnation or whether it's going to be in a different one it's still going to happen because we are all part of the light we are all part of god source universe itself and it's up to us to start remembering who we are we are these you know, I, I watch, you know, when I when I tune into the universal consciousness and think about, you know, being created as the soul, well, you know, the soul then kind of steps itself down, steps down, steps down, steps down until, you know, there's just this really concentrated focus that comes into physical form, which is really kind of, you know, the consciousness falling into the density and there's just you know the physical body the physical self is like the this fragment it's just a piece of the soul it's not the full thing mm -hmm. and there's so much more to us but when we're used to just seeing everything in a fragment then we think that the fragment is the full picture when it's not the full picture at all and if we just open up our awareness to see mm -hmm. the bigger picture, 
it all becomes clear really, really quickly if we allow it to. Yeah, yeah. So time to let go of that old fear baggage, all those old conditionings that we have brought forward. And we're here at the right time. Exactly. Right? So as we are you know, talking about this, sharing our light, sharing our love, that is co-creating that peace on earth that we know is possible. Exactly. It's happening. So all those listeners going and who listen to you and you know work with their essence, heart, their soul as much as possible, it is making a difference. Indeed. It is making a difference, yeah. Yep. The planet yeah. is waking up really quickly when we when we can step back and look around the world and see what's really going on with real people, not just what they're telling us. Mm -hmm. on, not, that's not what's really going on. Well, we <laughs> tune into what's really going on and yeah. we start to see the numbers of light workers stepping up, stepping forward, participating, you know, changing consciousness, changing the way we do things. We, there is so much hope for humanity and we can oh, yeah. see this heaven on earth starting to be generated now. Just even just in a microcosm classroom, we can see that happening. It's yeah, so, so yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's oh. amazing. I think that you know part of part of it is showing the kids what's actually possible, like for heaven on earth. Because you know, I just remember. I remember being very little and I remember at night when I would go to bed and I would just be part of the unified field. I would, I would experience this unconditional love mm. knowing that that's what's actually forever and always that's what's actually real. And I knew that, you know, cause I could kind of quote, turn around and look at the earth and go, wow, that little planet, they're not doing this there. Like unconditional love is not on this planet. And to me, it was very obvious at the time that humanity had amnesia, that nobody remembered who they actually were. And so they were all working from these wounds and from having no idea of their grandness or what's actually, what they're actually capable of. And it, you know, at two and three years old, that was really overwhelming to me. It was quite terrifying because to me, I could see the prison. I could see all of the structures. I knew that going to school was where we got programmed. So going to school was actually terrifying for me because mm. I knew what was going to happen. Oh, yeah, that would it, be terrifying. It was really, you know, I, but I didn't say, I, I didn't say anything because who was I going to talk to about it? You know, like they would all, you know, <laughs> no, mom, I'm not going to go to school because I'm not going to go into the programming. You're a teacher, but you know, this isn't what I'm going to do. I'm five. I'm not doing that. It wasn't I don't want to be over. a robot. <laughs> exactly. So, uh -oh. but like, I didn't see the, the, the possibilities for the future. Mm. I only saw like, oh, this is a prison planet. And I don't know why I got sent to prison. Like, what did I do wrong? I couldn't, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that because I had the unconditional love because I saw that we all had amnesia. I didn't realize that that was something that I was carrying to bring as a gift to humanity. So it was a wow. curse for a really long time until wow. I could turn it around to realize, wow, what a gift. And I'm just thinking at two, you know, at second grade, like if these kids actually saw the possibility for creating a whole new way of being on this planet and that they're the ones that are carrying those codes, they're mm -hmm. the ones that are carrying the dream. Like we could turn it all around in a real big hurry here on this planet. It's interesting. You had that picture of the um, asleep. And in this class where I got into trouble eight years ago. So this girl would now be 
Um, yeah, she was probably 10, 18, so she's a late teenager. And she sat down with me. I, I was sitting with the kids at lunch, and I was cleaning at one student's desk. And she confided in me, and she said, Mrs. M, I had this dream last night. And my friend and I were throwing up hearts. And she said, she said, the world, I'm not sure she said humanity. She said, the world is asleep. And I'm going, wow. I said, please remember that dream. Um, because she and her friend were throwing all hearts of love. Um, because she knew the planet was asleep. Yeah. And I went, wow. exactly. Pretty profound. So, you know, I got into trouble, but I also, these kids, one, one girl, her mother, she came to me the next, I was there two days, and she comes to me, she said, Mrs. M, my mom wants to know if you're a witch. And I said, well, no, I'm not a witch. She says, well, we put fairy bags out in the trees every night, and they disappear. Wow. So because I'd given them, they each had crystals that they could play with in the classroom. And she went home and told her mom. And so there was that. And this was one of the kids that was labeled as a um oh there's a, a term for for kids who um are hard to manage i didn't have any problems with her right. and most i didn't have any problems with the kids yeah you know because it, when we are shining our light like that mm -hmm. and trying to get through this density of the classroom and okay they need to learn math okay i mean if yeah, it, it's good to know arithmetic, and you need, you need to do some form of writing and reading to sort of get through some of the stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, those are just kind of the basics. Um, and and these kids were, yeah. So I was shown uh, different sides of these kids. You know, it's like that microcosm of the macrocosm, mm -hmm. and so there are these shining lights in the classroom. And I get to see them once in a while, which is kind of why I love doing the substitute teaching. Right. Right. You know, a woman listening listening to Hans, um, uh, he's a, a, a singer from um, Denmark. And I was playing his whale song CD. And this girl says, what is that music about? And I said, it's about whales. She said, oh, I love whales. And she was just so engrossed in the music and her love of the whales. And I said, you just keep, you just keep up with that. You just keep loving. And so sort of going, she was grade six. Wow. And I go, so some of these kids, yeah. they're, they're waking up. Yeah. They are and, all grand beings of light. Yeah. Only yeah. Who, who they actually are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if they just yeah. need somebody to remind them, they need somebody to show them their greatness. Yeah. Not what's wrong with them. You know, the whole school system is about, you know, sit down, shut up, listen to the teacher, stop daydreaming. That's just your imagination. That doesn't mean anything. It's like, wow, if we just had our teachers, you know, showing us that we are grand beings of light, that we are unlimited, we are loved unconditionally by God source itself, that, you know, when we, when we look to God source itself, nature itself, and source our well-being from there, rather than trying to source it from other people who are are still asleep it turns everything around it does oh wow yeah so it's it's happening i'm not the only teacher that's it got it. it there's others uh doing it as well and so all over the world i can just imagine just different teachers all over the world yeah making these kids curious wondering um searching yeah i'm finding those people that will can be their mentors yeah it may or may not be their parents exactly yeah yeah, yeah. i know there's a whole 
a huge movement around the world for micro schools, you know, for, for teaching small groups of children, you know, by people who are actually awake, who remember what's going on. So we can start to, instead of school these children, allow them to learn. Like we don't need to teach the children. We need to allow them to learn about life on, from direct experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I'm so glad to know that you are out there in the school system helping these children to remember who they are and what's actually possible. This is so beautiful. Yeah, it's it's an honor. I I feel uh, honored and humbled, actually, because I'm doing the best I can. Because I I come from, well, I'm 73. I'm ageless. When the kids ask me how old I am, I say oh, I'm ageless. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's like the funniest question and then some kids said spirit i said yeah exactly You're right yeah. right that is it. Um, i know yeah, that's so. the one question when people ask me i just i literally like i glaze over like, <laughs> like i literally like i don't know like i never keep track of how old i am like doesn't even occur to me to put a number to me like so like I don't know you figured out (laughs) (laughs) wow so Anne you make all of these beautiful jewelry you know pieces of jewelry the treasure boxes the the books that you're writing how do people purchase these how do they get in touch with you how can they find out more well the the books are on Amazon dot uh, ca or dot com and the i have an app called authentic sacred design mm. uh, and that name came to me i guess it's a couple of years ago because my original sort of company name was uh hcnl harmony compassion and love soil alchemy because uh, my first uh, spirit uh, my, my guide um real in-person coach she said you're working with the divas well, that's nice. I I don't even know what how to connect with spirits or divas or whatever. Anyway, and that's where the hope chest started. And then a few years later, it was these coins. And then it was, oh, well, what am I going to do with them? So anyway, I've got all the all the, the the jewelry. It's on my app, Authentic Sacred Design. And the four pillars or elements are body, mind, spirit, and earth. So there's all sorts of information on how to help your body be healthy. Uh, There's sort of mindfulness things. There's uh, spirit related and different people. And you could actually be in on my app as a um, resource person. Um, So I I get you into the app. So if anybody's cruising, um, then, oh, oh, this, oh, that looks interesting. And then they have a way of connecting with you. And then, and then I do psychic fairs. I go to uh, sort of oh, health, health and wellness. Um, that's kind of died off. It's kind of died off with COVID. Uh, and so I only do, I've only been to one or two. And yeah, kind I of killed off a lot of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I have my, the website app is, a, it's on the same platform. And then once in a while on Facebook, I'll, put a shout out or I'll have a, I might have a competition to win a, a hope chest um, or I'll, I might put one of my poems on my Facebook page and just have people just share it with people. Sure. Um, yeah. So basically that's kind of it for me. I'm just sort of in the, I used to want to be in the quiet background, but that doesn't serve. <laughs> I don't serve anybody, and so uh, yeah. So it's the, the book, I hand out the gardening books to school. If it's a French immersion book, all the Rosie's Joy books, which is this little guy, this little guy here. So I have them in French and Spanish. So and actually, I gifted one to a kindergarten boy who could only speak Spanish, and because it's got English, it's Spanish with English subtitles. Oh. His parents could read it to him. And he could learn English at the same time. Aww. So once in a while, I just gift them to people. Uh, yeah, and it's really hard to get them into bookstores because you have to go through established publishers mm-hmm. to get it into the store. I've got a few in our 
a library throughout the lower mainland in Vancouver. And so, yeah, it's just word of mouth. And uh, yeah, my app and show the odd show. And and then being able to talk like this on yeah. a uh, um, program like yours. Oh, exactly. Well, we, we do know a publisher that might be able to help you get some things out into the world, Mr. Yes. Keith Giannis. <laughs> our, yeah, our, our, have a conversation with him. Yeah, for sure. Because I yeah. think um, when I first, when I published, I self-published my book to begin with, and it was only on Amazon. And now when I redid it with um, the 10th anniversary edition, of the simplicity of self healing, I had Keith publish it, and now it'll get dispersed to all the bookstores as well. Oh, okay, a little secret to uh, a little yeah, like I didn't really know about that, but I I think that's what the deal is. So you can talk to Keith; he's very he's very knowledgeable about all this stuff. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. So, and thank you so much. Do you have a website as well? Is it that- is, and it's the same name, AuthenticSacredDesign.com. Uh, all right, beautiful. Yeah. So if you are watching on YouTube or listening on Connecting You to You Radio, simply check the show notes and we'll have the links to Anne's website and her app. Well, I don't know. Can I put a link to an app? Is that how it goes? I'm pretty. Uh, no, the link I can give you. I can give you the Android and um, the Apple link to the app. Okay. So I can I, I can send that to you, and then you can include it. However. Okay. So we'll we'll put all the pertinent information so that you can get in touch with Anne. You can find out all the beautiful, amazing things that she creates. And and this has been such a pleasure having you on the show today. And I've I've enjoyed myself. This has been wonderful. Yay! So I appreciate your your knowledge, your wisdom, and what you're doing. And uh, yeah, I've I've had fun. So Yay! Thank you. That's always a goal: is to have fun, <laughs> uplifting educational conversations that just spark some awareness, so that we can really start to help people remember that they are grand beings of light. We are souls in physical form, but we are souls first and foremost and always and forever. So start looking at the non-physical, start looking at who we really are, start to remember the grand beings of light that we truly are. And what's actually possible for this beautiful living planet. (laughs) So, and thank you so much for teaching these children for, for caring enough to be in the school system and to really help to spark that connection, that reconnection to planet earth and our true nature. Mm. Hope that you will come back and have another conversation with us some other time because I'd love to very fun. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you. You too, Anne. And thank you to everybody who has been watching. If you want to reach out to Anne, check the show notes. And if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me at connectingyoutoyou.com. Until next Sunday, create for yourselves a great week. Remember that you are a grand being of light. Shine that light. Love you all. See you next week.